Thank you. So uh, as we know that oxygen is very important for brain function and the disease. And the MRI is a powerful tool to measure oxygen content in brain based on the hemoglobin. This is very <clears throat> natural contrast with very high concentration in blood. And its magnetic property highly depends on oxygen binding. Therefore, uh, measure, measurement of the magnetic property related to hemoglobin can have the blood oxygenation, which determine the local oxygen content in the brain tissue. So basically, there are four magnetic properties will be affected by oxygen uh, binding of the hemoglobin. But uh, except the blood uh, T2, the most of these uh, uh, properties are measured on the tissue signal. So then, therefore, this T2 oximetry that measures the T2 of the isolated venous blood signal and converted to this blood T2 to blood oxygenation has an advantage that has less interference from tissue and then the simple model. But due to no blood content in tissue, T2 oximetry, especially for the mapping technique, could have the no signature noise. So uh, therefore my talk will be have the two parts. First part is for the T2 measurement for both T2 oximetry in large vessel and also voxel based mapping. And the second part is about the blood T2 and the blood oxygenation conversion. So as we discussed above, the T2 oximetry in brain tissue could have no signal noise. Therefore the early T2 oximetry and try to use high resolution T2 acquisition on large blood vessel to separate the tissue and the blood in space, which was first done by Dr. Wright in 1991, many focus on the pulmonary vessel like the aorta. Then for the brain, uh, Dr. Chin has developed a fast T2 protocol to measure the venous blood oxygenation in internal jugular vein for the global brain oxygen consumption. As shown in the right figure, the high resolution image assures the multiple vessels with pure venous blood and have the high signal noise. Besides the separation from the space, the venous spin tagging technique that use the label and the control scans is applied as a trust sequence. So similar to the ASL, the difference imaging between the label scan that inverts the upstream venous blood and also the control scan without inversion can effectively, effectively remove the tissue signal. And the relative when those uh, acquisition, a uh, relatively low acquisition resolution could increase the signal noise and obtain the good T2 measurement for the venous blood in the super, uh, superior sinus for the global uh, like uh, oxygen consum consumption. So although T2 oximetry in large vessel is very robust, it, uh, but this uh, uh, T2, uh, T2 oxygenation in large vessel is more reflected the global oxygen metabolism than in brain and uh, it may not be uh, uh, very sensitive to local oxygen consumption. Therefore, the T2 ox oximetry mapping is needed. So, but the T2 oxy ox oximetry mapping is very challenging. In each voxel, it contains the stat static tissue, artery blood, venous blood, and the CSF. And the venous blood fraction is very small. Therefore, the main challenge is to effectively isolate the small venous blood signal. So first is the, for the tissue signal. So the challenge to separate the tissue and the venous blood is that first, venous blood has a slow floating rate and the delay of the second range is not enough to make a, a good spa a spatial difference uh, for the use of the spatially selective labeling scheme like the ASL. Also the tissue is specially like a gray matter has a similar T1 as blood and can, can't use the multiple inversion background separation. However, the tissue and the blood has a significant uh, difference, that is the uh, ve velocity. The velocity selective pulse with the proper uh, cutoff velocity can effectively separate the tissue and the blood. So this is a conversion, a conversional velocity selective pulse string. As shown in its velocity response figure, uh, the, the difference imaging between label and the control scan can suppress the tissue while preserve the blood signal. However, in this velocity selective pulse, both the label and the control scan can preserve, uh, preserve tissue signal, which can, uh, could induce higher tissue noise in the difference image. Then Dr. Guo and Wang developed a V velocity selective excitation pulse 
that has a 90 degree phase shift on the uh, 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 flip, uh, flip back 90 degree pulse as a circle by this red. Two of these uh, VSC pulse will create a sine square modula uh, modulation on the velocity and it can suppress the tissue in the label scan. Then recently, Dr. Xing and Qing also developed a Fourier transform based velocity selective pulse train. Basically, this pulse is divided a 90 degree suppression pulse to nine 10 degree pulse. Between these 10 degree pulse, the velocity sensitive module with the gradients are inserted. Therefore, for tissue that is static and insensitive to gradient, this is just a 90 degree suppression pulse. But for the flowing spring, the velocity sensitive module will generate the phase shift to prevent the efficient suppression, like shown in this velocity response figure. It has an advantage to suppress the tissue uh, signal both in label and the control scan and it decrease the tissue noise. And it also has a smaller B factors that could decrease the CSF uh, contamination. So this uh, 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 Fourier transform based velocity selective saturation sequence has also uh, used in our CBV and the VCBV measurement. After solving this uh, tissue suppression problem, we'll have to deal with this arterial blood suppression. As shown in the right figure, Dr. Guo and Dr. Wang have used a spatial selective inversion to invert the upstream artery. After a delay, this inverted artery blood will recover to zero and flow into the imaging plane. This artery building model is used in the vision sequence and have high signal noise, but it has a possibility to be sensitive to the arterial transit time. So to reduce the dependence of the arterial transit time, the velocity selective pulse can also be used to specifically label capillary blood. And then uh, after a delay, we can measure that this venous blood that is flowing out from the capillary. So the left figure is the velocity response of the conventional velocity selective pulse, in which the capillary blood with the flowing rate smaller than cutoff velocity is labeled while artery blood is suppressed. The right figure is the magnetization evolution, consider the T1 and the T2 realization. We can see that after the velocity selective pulse, the capillary blood and the artery blood is separated. Note that a long selective inversion pulse has to be inserted in the middle of the delay time to remove the T1 recovery of artery blood. Certainly, this inversion pulse will also invert venous blood and lose some venous signal. So to increase this venous signal, we use the combination of uh, uh, Fourier transform based velocity inversion pulse and a long selective inversion pulse. As shown in the left figure, the combination of these two pulses create a velocity response that preserves the capillary blood while invert the artery blood. Then the T1 recovery of the artery blood will help us to new this artery blood. So as shown in the right figure, uh, we don't need another inversion pulse in the middle of the delay, which will decrease the venous signal. So here is a summary to uh, preparation uh, for the preparation part in all the T2 oximetry mapping technique. They have very similar structures as initial, initially proposed by Dr. Bowler in this uh, quixotic sequence. The difference is that in tissue separation part, uh, vision and FT based T2 oximetry uh, pulse used the VS excitation or the FT VS saturation pulse to have smaller tissue noise and in autoimmune, a snap selective inversion and FT VSI are used for higher venous signal. So here we compare the preparation of the FT VS oximetry technique and the quixotic using the same acquisition. We can see that the FT VS has a higher venous signal and their uh, whole slice average um, blood oxygenation are very similar. Or rows for some blood oxygenation value in some voxels are different. We also did the reproducibility test on the FTVS uh, T2 oximetry experiment. The mayor, the T2, uh, T2 showed that good agreement of voxel wisely. Certainly, the difference could result from the T2 fitting uncertainty due to the no safety noise, but it also could result from physiological noise. One more thing I want to mention is the CSF correction. In the left figure, we use a multi echo spin echo acquisition for both. Uh, uh, FTVS oximetry and the quixotic. 
The second row is the imaging with long TE that only CSF signal could be left. This imaging clearly shows that there is still part of CSF uh, signal left, even when we use the velocity selective pulse to suppress the signal with a low flowing rate. As in the simulation on the right figure, we can see a 10% uh, CSF could induce uh, like a 30 millisecond over uh, estimate, estimation in the T2 fitting. So several methods have been proposed for CSF correction. Basically, all these uh, methods use uh, this echoes acquired and long TE to obtain this uh, residue CSF signal. And the CSF T2 can be estimated as like uh, 1.2 and 1.3 second in the tissue voxel. And it uh, can uh, also can be measured uh, voxel by voxel using a separate uh, me uh, method. Then we go to the blood T2 and uh, blood oxygenation conversion part. Basically, this uh, blood T2 realization results from the uh, exchange effect, diffusion effect, and also the intrinsic realization of the hemoglobin and albumin solution. This effect could make the blood T2 highly depends on hematocrit blood oxygenation, and especially the interval uh, between the refocusing pulse tau as shown in the right figure. So current popular T2 and the blood oxygenation conversion module, many build the calibration curve used at a specific tau value as shown in the left figure. This model are very useful for the global T2 oximetries. However, for T2 ox oximetry mapping, other experimental requirements as missing the right will ask for more specific tau value, which may not be found in the pre previous calibration curve. So recently we developed a model that can con uh, conveniently predict the blood T2 from B0 blood oxygenation, hematocrit, and tau. And the predicted value agree very well with the previous measurement in the literature as shown in the left figure. We also have this uh, web-based ca uh, calculators. After inputting this B0, tau, hematocrit, and T2 value, then a blood oxygenation Y can be obtained. At the end, I want to say that this global T2 oximetry, especially like a trust, is robust and is very well validated and have a very wide application. But uh, for the T2 oximetry mapping, it is still under developing um, uh, many limited to the signal noise. But this technique is promising and will be valuable for the local oxygen in investigation. And uh, uh, thank you for your attention.